fallout from Candace Owens' ouster from the Daily Wire continues with more pro and anti-Candace voices expressing their opinions on social media. Journalist Barry Weiss did not mince words, posting, quote, and this piece doesn't even touch on her truly bat leap views about uh, Brigitte Macron, that it took the Daily Wire this long to sever ties with Candace Owens is alarming. Ex-presidential hopeful Marion Williamson also jumped in, posting, quote, Candace Owens didn't lose her job because she opposes Israel. She lost her job because she has said and is continuing to say vile things about Jews ourselves. She knows this, and she is conflating the two for a reason. She will now come after me, of course, et, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Owens firing from a supposedly pro-free speech outlet did leave some wondering if it was an act of censorship or at the very least cancel culture. Journalist Glenn Greenwald pounced on Weiss and company, posting, quote, same was true when the New York Times fired editors for publishing the Tom Cotton op-ed. Most of the right, along with Barry Weiss, treated that as a grave act of censorship. Viewpoint-based firings are exactly the sort of thing the right has long condemned as cancel culture. Greenwald also posted excerpts from a piece that Weiss wrote in 2021 in which she warned of deplatforming as a consequence of speaking out. Quote, ideas are replaced with identity. Forgiveness is replaced with punishment. Debate is replaced with deplatforming. Diversity is replaced with homogeneity of thought. Inclusion with exclusion. So obviously our Friday team handled the initial news of the Candace Owens ouster. We're reacting now for the first time. Um, lots to discuss. And look, I, as, I think as someone who has been a frequent inveyor against cancel culture, it is hard to get around the position of people like Ben Shapiro and, frankly, everyone else part of the Daily Wire making anti-cancel culture one of the most vital aspects of their identity. And the problem is when you, when you do that, when you start going not just, obviously, the government can't silence people. That violates the First Amendment. They shouldn't make social media couple, couple, uh, companies silence people. When you go all the way to... What, everyone is entitled to a, a, a platform on your network? You get into these weird situations where then you can't fire anyone. Or if somebody else fires someone, you complain about it, but when you do it, it's okay. Well, it's justified, they're saying, because she's an anti-Semite, and it said, you know, that's their That's claim. what they said. You get into this weird position where you do end up looking hypocritical, right. I think. It's the, the problem that... Look, I have been a critique of the weaponization of identity politics since I, that, that was the beginning of my foray into journalism. Mm -hmm. But that's a very different thing from making the argument that identity doesn't matter. And what I think some critics of some of the more right-leaning people who have made identity politics their bet noir over the last five, six, seven, ten years or so, is that what it sometimes reads as is not that they think identity politics are bad, but they think that your identity doesn't matter and their identity does. Mm -hmm. So it's all about being victimized if you're a white Christian male, or in this case, if you are Jewish. And obviously, anti-Semitism is real and exists, but the question is whether or not they are identifying that Candace Owens has said things that are anti-Semitic, which I see people making the accusation, and I'd be interested to see the evidence of that, or if the critique is because she has a different view about Zionism and what right. is going on in Gaza than other people at the Daily Wire. Right. So there are some criticisms of her that I think are valid, even along anti-Semitism lines. Uh, Mediaite reports that she liked a tweet saying that Jews were drunk on Christian blood. That is anti-Semitism. Do we have, I'm just um, curious, I've seen that, but I haven't been able to see the tweet. I don't, I have, right, I have it per Mediaite from Deadline. From, right, yeah, that's fine. We should trace that down specifically. Um, and then, but some other things, what's going on right now, and they're accusing her of anti-Semitism over, I am much more skeptical of this, this whole Christ is King phrase. So mm -hmm. she tweeted, you know, we're coming up on Easter, Christ is King, something like that. And now a lot of people affiliated with the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, Andrew Clavin, who, you know, Andrew Clavin is a very smart religious scholar, was formerly Jewish, converted to Christianity, saying that he calls that an anti-Semitic dog whistle. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people... That's from someone who was formerly Jewish and converted to Christianity. Right. Isn't the, the whole break about deciding that Christ is the Son of God and that therefore not, you're going to... You I, believe in Christianity? Again, I was raised, I don't know. That I he died raised, for your sins is not the whole point of Christianity? I was raised Catholic, uh, which is a slightly different thing. I have never come to understand that. And then again, I'm not the, you know, I'm not the go-to source for religious authority, just so we're all clear. I have More never so heard, than this that, agnostic. heard that phrase um, described as anti-Semitic. This seems 
kind of invented on the spot to me, I'm just going to say. No, so keep in mind that this has all come on the heels of Candace Owens doing a couple of high-profile interviews um, with people who are very strongly supportive of, of Israel. So she's been in this back and forth with Rabbi Shmuley. We've talked mm -hmm. about him on the show in the context of being an advisor to RFK Jr. Um, it, it's gotten pretty ugly. Rabbi Shmuley um, has accused uh, Candace Owens of a lot of things. She said, come on my show, we'll debate it. My subjective opinion is that he didn't fare very well in that context. Candace Owens can be very poised and very really gets out over her skis in those kind of debate contexts and tends to perform very well. It got ugly in part because Rabbi Shmuley's daughter um, sells uh, adult toys and is in, involved in that business, which is, I have no issue with at all. But Candace Owens tends to be more culturally conservative. And so there was this weird juxtaposition of Rabbi Shmuley kind of trying to claim a moral high ground um, at the same time that Candace Owens was trying to claim a moral high ground because of his promotion of his daughter's business. And it became a whole thing. And then there was this, another similar interview um, with another Zionist that I think might also have wrinkled some feathers over at the Daily wire. And so just the timing of it and the public nature of the kinds of conversations that Candace Owens has been having lately. She also did a long form interview with Norm Finkelstein a couple of months ago that got enormous ratings. And so I do think it was a matter of time. Uh, how long was it going to be between the ten before the tensions between Candace Owens's programming and um, uh, Ben Shapiro's politics on this particular issue were going to come to some kind of head? So I found the tweet. Um, so this was during the fight with Rabbi Shmuley back on March 13th. Some he's um, he's feuding with Candace, and some I, I, just some random person or some person I don't know responded to Shmuley and said, you know, criticizing for what he's saying or taking issue with it, like fact checking it, and then saying, "Are you drunk on Christian blood again?" And she liked that tweet. So. Yeah. There you, there you have it. Uh, you know, look, it's uh, Candace Owens. We <laughs> had a very interesting, uh, the, like the arc of her career. She is mostly known now, obviously, for being this conservative commentator, someone who's very critical of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you know, all lives matter type stuff has has said everything she said about that. When she initially burst onto the scene back in twenty like fifteen, she was actually. Um, she was certainly not right coded. I wouldn't say she was necessarily left coded. She was almost lib coded in some ways. She uh, her first like foray into national attention was launching um, called something called Social Autopsy, which was an what she described as an anti bullying organization mm. because she had been uh, she had received death threats or ra like racist death threats from a friend or something. It's a convoluted story. She got a little bit of national attention and then she spun that into like a, like an anti bullying thing. But her her plan and she didn't this didn't really go anywhere. But the idea of social autopsy was going to be to de de, de make not anonymous anymore the the internet because she thought anonymous trolls were the problem and were harassing people and bullying people. And if the internet was less anonymous, you could hold those people accountable. Um, that got her into trouble with both pro-Gamergate and anti-Gamergate people, mm. if you remember the whole Gamergate mm. controversy. Basically, right and left united against her because neither side wanted to, because those people were always harassing each other, so neither side wanted to move forward with this make the, make the internet no longer anonymous thing. Um, it was like a profound misunderstanding of that conflict. Then she pivoted in this very anti-Black Lives Matter and eventually conservative comment yeah. direction. So some people have accused yeah. her of being not particularly a kind sincere, of an opportunist. although well, people especially, change their views over time. Well, especially because that initial bullying campaign was spurred because she sued, she sued her school district right. over accusations that she was being bullied for her race and that the, the school district wasn't defending her appropriately. So for her to have gone from racism exists and it was targeted against me and I deserve a 37,000 judgment for the school district because I was targeted for my race to everyone's exaggerating the importance of race. Racism doesn't matter. Racism wasn't factor, a factor in these police killings, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, seems incongruent to a lot of folks. Yeah. I mean, you can look, you can change your mind over the course of 10 years. It could be when she was a much younger person. She thought 
Or it this could be an insane. example of her doing arguably what so many of these cancel culture critics are doing now, which is to say that identity politics don't matter. Other people complaining about being targeted for who they are mm -hmm. doesn't matter and is overblown when it's happening to them. But when it's happening to me, it's a big deal and everyone should pay attention. I think the one thing you can't say about her, however, at least in her latest ventures, is that you're right. Like, she does not shy from a fight or a debate no. or an argument. So if you're going to say, you know, you don't like her view, like the, the, the answer to the, instead of canceling her, you know, have, have her interview people or have people on a show who disagree and they can fight about Israel or other issues or whatever it is, like she does do that. Yes. So and it's not like she's just delivering she's a monologue that's totally contrary to what the rest of the people think. Like she does do that kind of arguments. So I, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's hard to get yourself out of the position if you're the Daily Wire. Yes. She's, she's smart and she's poised issue. and I think she's dotted her I's and crossed her T's more on this than uh, other people have. Mm. And so I'm very interested to see where she goes next. When when the break happened, she tweeted, yes, it's true, I'm free. I don't know if she's going to kind of pull a Tucker Carlson or hang up her own shingle, start her own um, company, media company. But she certainly does have a huge audience that she's earned, I think, from being willing to confront her views and frankly change her mind on things that involve and have really more constructive dialogues on her channel than some other people in that side of the space have had, including some of these recent debates with Norm Finkelstein and the like that I encourage people to listen to and make of it as they will. Interesting. Well, we will continue reacting to that. And that's our show for the day. We have another one tomorrow, Tuesday, and we hope you tune in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Fare thee well. <laughs> Take care.